stand as we prepare to say how great is our God. Thank you. Yes, 
ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his words. Do you have my grapes ready? Yeah, you can get the grapes for me. All right. I want you to look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, the preacher is going to talk about additions and subtractions. That's what we're going to talk about. Additions and subtractions. Yeah, give, give me, let's see. Give me a table too. Give me a table. Yeah, give me a small table. Because we want to do this right. Something will happen in every day. Are y'all ready? Now y'all know how I flow. Now, do I have my amen corner? Okay. That that was pretty good. But I'm gonna try it again. Do I have my amen corner over here? Let, let me come back over here. Do I have my amen corner over here? All right. What about my middle section? Y'all ready? Yeah. Spirit of the living God, as we approach your throne of grace, we thank you for the multitude of your mercy, the multitude of your grace. Speak out of our mouth like fire that will birth forth transformation in this place. Cover me under the shadow of your wings. I pray that no imp or devil be able to track or trace me in the realm of the spirit. We thank you for what's getting ready to take place. We thank you for yokes being destroyed. We thank you for answers given because you have purpose for this message. And we pray that it will not return void but accomplish to the place where it is sent. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Now I want you to do me a favor. Everybody before you take your seats give God a crazy praise. Go. Come on. Give him praise. From the fruit of your lips give him praise. Come on, open up your mouth and give him praise. Oh, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord for those that need to attend towards your baby. If they just need that type of attention, we have our nursery to my right in the back and you can still hear the message. We have been discussing in the last couple of weeks new wine. I've discovered, Minister Rotonda, that when God starts talking about new wine, he has addition in mind. For new wine is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. It is symbolic of the blessings of the Lord. It's symbolic of renewed intimacy with God restoration that he wants to give you in some place of your life for he says i will restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten up it is symbolic also of a trial that you have gone through and now you're coming out on the other side with joy weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning. I don't know what you may be experiencing or going through right now, but based off today, the clock is ticking and joy is coming in the morning. New wine can also be symbolic of harvest time. Isn't it by coincidence that we are talking about new wine as we enter into this harvest season? New wine can also be symbolic of celebration where you are celebrating God, celebrating his goodness. It is important, people of God, that we understand once again that new wine is for addition. Addition, uh, when we start talking about the menu, that we, the recipe or the wine that we use to put in our food, it is always there to enhance. It's there to advance is to give accent towards your cooking. Wine is there to fortify. And fortify has all to do with strengthening. When God comes into your life, he comes into your life to 
do. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to fortify you. He, he wants to support you he wants to improve you let me say that again when God comes into your life he's coming to add on to you he wants to strengthen you he wants to support you he wants to lift you up above the circumstances that circumvent around you he does not want you to stay the same he wants to enhance you so by this time next year you should look in the mirror and don't even recognize the reflection because God is coming into your life to do by this time next year you should come out of the shallow waters and launch out into the deep because God is pushing you into goodness he's pushing you into greatness he comes to enhance your life it's very amazing to me when we go to the old testament and we start talking about the 10 spies that were sent out to spy out the land and it was interesting that when they came back they came back with a sign of a cluster of grapes when God is getting ready to do something special in your life, he always gives you a sign that something is coming. I don't know if you recognize this or not, uh, or maybe you had a sensation of feeling you just was, I, I don't know what it is, but something is coming. Look at your neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, something is coming and it's good, it's pressed down, it's shaken together, it's running over for everything that I've been through. Something and it's coming. I feel a stirring in my spirit that a change is on the way. I feel a stirring in my spirit that new wine is coming to the table. It's rap tap tapping on the window pane. That blessings is about to hit my house. Look at somebody else and say blessing is about to hit my house. Oh, you said that too lightly because if you really believe that, you would jump up and give God praise that through everything I've been through, Something is about to change in my life. So you got to pay attention to the signs, not the gossip. Pay attention to the signs, not the distractions, not the naysayers, not the gainsayers. I told you at the beginning of this year that the enemy was going to be sending distractions. And you got to tell distractions, you got to go. I'm focused on the author and the finisher of my faith. Something is coming my way. Somebody show hallelujah. hallelujah. And grapes are a sign that wine is coming. Let me say it again. Grapes are a sign that wine is coming. The blessings of the gospel are considered wine and milk. Let me say it again. The blessings of the gospel are considered as wine and milk. Isaiah 55 and 1, it says, come on, everyone that's thirsty, come on and to the waters and drink. He that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now, I found that to be very interesting, because what does it mean to buy wine and milk without money? Because if I go into the grocery store and go for some milk and wine without paying for it, I'm liable to be arrested. But Jesus, he invites us into one of the greatest investments of a lifetime. He says, I want you to buy this wine and this milk without money. He said, I have already paid the price. And I want you to invest. Oh, God. <laughs> this is the beauty of the gospel that our Lord and Savior in, invites us into the investment of a lifetime. He said, come on, buy this wine and milk without money. My God. Without money. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Oh. And labor for that which satisfies not. Hearken diligently unto me. 
and let your soul, your soul represents the mind, the will, and the emotions. He said, let your soul delight itself in fatness. Many have invested in people, places, and things, but did not come away with the ROI. What does ROI? Return on investment. But check out what God is doing. He said, I want you to invest with your heart. This is a heart investment. And when I give back to you, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to backstab you. I'm not going to turn around and treat you one way and be fickle. And I'm, I'm not that type of God. I am going to cause you to be steadfast because that's how I am. Unmovable and always abounding in the works of the Lord. For this is a hard investment. Now check out what Psalms 34 and says. Psalms 34 says, uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's almost daring. It's like a daring scripture. I dare you to taste. I dare you to invest. I, I dare you to touch the hem of the garment. I dare you to say yes to God. He said, oh, taste and see just a little taste taste of God will change your life. Just a little taste of God will turn situations around. Just a little taste. You don't need a whole lot. Just a whole taste and see that the Lord is good like this grape here. Mm. Mm, see, you can't be jealous of my taste because I chose to taste it. You can stand there and look at me and, and be jealous of my taste. But until you do it, yeah. you got to do it yourself. Oh, taste and see. Uh oh, wait, just excuse me because that was pretty good. Let me go back over here. Mmm. 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 That's how it really is. When, see, when the spirit of the Lord really gets up and, and, and calls you to taste, some things going to change. And you're going to say, mmm. It'll do something for your spirit. It will do something for your soul. Look at your neighbor and say, taste and see. Y'all not ready for this today. So when God comes into your life, he comes to add, not subtract. Jesus refers to himself as the true vine. He says, I'm not an imitation. I'm not a caricature of something that you have put in your head. I'm not, I'm not formulated. I am the real deal. I am the bread. I am the water. I am the true vine. I am the door. And no man can come to the Father but by me. You got to come through the door. Anything else you consider a thief and a robber, you must go through the door. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I am heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Only thing you got to do is come. You've been trying to do it yourself, work it out yourself. you trying to figure it out out it's not coming together what you need to do is cast your care on the Lord for he cares for you somebody show hallelujah. hallelujah but then check it out he goes on and says but my father is the vine dresser my God, my God. he says I'm the door I'm the true vine but my father is the vine dresser what does that mean a vine dresser is a person that prunes, that trains, and cultivates. And when God begins to prune, train, and cultivate, he always has addition and multiplication in mind. Look at the beauty of this verse. That when he comes to remove dead things, he says if there's a dead thing, he says, I'm going to take it away. Let me say this. Anything that God removes that de that's dead, don't try to resurrect it. Y'all didn't get that. Let me say it over here. When God removes dead things out your life, 
Let it go. Later, alligator. After a while, crocodile is dead. Don't call. Don't text. Don't email. Don't send a, a, a message by your girlfriend. It's over. It's dead. Let it go. Uh-oh, y'all don't want it. Let it go and let go. That's half the reason why you depressed. That's half the reason why you confused. You insist on being connected to dead things. That boyfriend left 15 years ago and you still... <laughs> he gone! Lord, y'all don't want this today. Y'all say, 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 say y'all want to play games. Say, you, you still holding on to dead things. And God brought you into 1521 North Park so you can let go of dead things, dead conversations, dead relationships, dead situations. It's over. Let go. Free yourself. Get the weight off of you so you can move on and experience all that God wants to give you. Look at your neighbor and say, let go of dead things. That was worth the trip. <laughs> Baby, you, you don't like me? That's your business. It's a dead thing. I got some place to go. I got things to do. I got places to go. I don't care if you don't like me. I like me. I like what I see in the mirror. You don't have to like me. I like me. That's a dead thing over there. Uh-oh. See, I got to come up off that because, see, I'll preach that off for the next 30 minutes because I know what it's like to carry dead things and dead people and dead situations. And, and I'm upset and I'm crying. And, oh, they go like, baby, rejection is a blessing if you see it from the right perspective. It's a dead thing. Uh-oh. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. It's the beauty of the verse. When God says, I remove dead things. Is dead. But he goes on to say, but I will also prune. Now this is interesting because he says, I prune your tree so you can bear more fruit. If you don't see this from the right perspective, you're going to think God is subtracting out of your life. He said, I'm not coming to subtract. I'm coming to add on. But if I prune the tree, I see this, this is this, you don't need that. I'm just cutting it away. Cause see, you thought it was good, but he prunes those things we even think that are good. This is what we don't understand about the sovereignty of God. He will prune things and people. I thought you was my road dog. You was my homie. I thought, you, I thought we had it going on. And next thing you know, cut. People come into your life for a reason, a season, and a lifetime. Cut. I want you to do something with your Holy Ghost imagination. Just take the season. Cut. That's what's just going on in your life. God's been cutting some things and some people and situations out of your life. I know you've been crying, but sooner or later you're going to understand why God did that. He did that for a purpose. He did it for a reason because it was sucking the life out of you. He'll cut the leeches that's smiling in your face all the time, want to take your place. He'll cut them right out of your life. You think they for you, and it's a Judas. You think they for you, and it's Jezebel. You think they for you, and they letting you have it. And you, con you are insisting on being connected to something that God wants to prune. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't. Mm -mm. He said, when you, he said, when I prune it, he said, I want to add more, more stuff to you. Yes, sir. More blessings. He said, I want to elevate your mind so you can be thinking on another level. Because some of you all insist on thinking down here. That's why he's pruning, because the conversations are down here. And I want you to come up here. And I want you to start reading up here. And I want you to be socializing up here. And I want you to be hanging out with the kings and the queens and the CEOs and the managers. And you insist on being down here. But look at your neighbor and say, come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the vine dresser, who is also the wine maker, knows what belongs and what doesn't. 
and it's in this you have to trust the sovereignty of God when God starts cutting out of your life sometimes it's as close as your own children I love you but I gotta love you from over there you know what some some of y'all parents know what I'm talking about. You doing a little bit too much, and you can bring you bringing mama, you bringing daddy down. You 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 stressing me out. I gotta love you. I'm not gonna stop loving you, but I'm have to love you from across the street. Uh oh. Somebody say help me, Lord. Then he says, abide in me. I'm getting to the point. I'm just working on the lettuce and tomato and the cucumbers. Let me, I haven't even got to the entree. It says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. He invites us to abide in him. Just abide, to stay. Somebody say stay. Stay. Through your ups, the downs, the ins, and outs. Just stay. Don't go nowhere. Just stay with the Lord. It's okay. Just stay. Just stay. I know it's not always good. Sometimes you wake up, you don't even feel safe. You you on the street and you about ready to cuss. Just stay. That's all. Do I have a witness? I'm, it's just us here. We might as well have this conversation. I'm talking to some real people. Can we be transparent today? Every day you don't wake up feeling holy. You don't wake up like, no, there ain't no shata today. No, no. There are days that you're ready to smack the boss, smack the Walmart employee. There are days, there are days. You gotta have to, anybody in this place, don't say nothing to me today. I'm not feeling it today. God, I need you to help me. I got you, I'm working on some stuff. And then, see, you think I'm always, see, but I mortify that other person called JT. Mm-hmm. Every day. Because <laughs> JT ain't saved. Uh, do I have a witness in the house? Do I have any JTs or TT or somebody? Because sometimes, anyway, I knew I was in the house with some real people. I want you to tell the truth that every day is not like that. We are saved by grace through faith. And we accept that, not of ourselves. And then we say, Father, I need you to strengthen me today. I need you to help me today. I'm not feeling this today. And right when you ask, here come God. Isn't that awesome how he does that? He says, I want you to stay connected as the grape stays to the vine. He said, I want you to stay connected. He said, because if it falls off and you're not connected, then you begin to wither and spoil. If you've ever been to a grapevine, all the grapes are just connected, but if you see one on the ground, it's withering and spoiling. So you gotta stay connected. Jesus is saying to us, I am your life source. In him I live, I move and have being. I am your life, so I want you to stay connected. Matter, now, now think about this for a minute, because this is grapes, and grapes makes the, the wine. He said, this is the first start of your process. Meet me next week, I got something to tell you. Some of y'all won't be here, but uh, uh, you come back next week, I'm a, I got something to tell you. Now, that we done with the salad. Allow me to flip this quilt over and take the needle and thread and have another design on the same quilt. My great-grandmother was really good for that. Mama dear, she could flip the quilt over and have a different design on the other side. Come on. Come through. Come through. Genesis 49, he said, Genesis? Now what in the world does that have to do with John? Hold on, I got something for you. Genesis 49, there's a different design. For Jacob has, is on the, his dying bed. And he is giving, listen, he is giving prophecy concerning his sons. There are two sons that I want us to pay close attention to. Joseph and Judah. Joseph, Jacob prophesies, listen at this, he says, you're going to be as a vine that goes over the wall. 
basically telling him that you, your, your ministry is not local. He says, I'm going to cause it to be a blessing to many. It's going over the boundary line. I thought that was good. But when he gets to Judah, he says, first of all, Judah means praise. You do know that. Your brothers will praise you. Check this out. Genesis 49, 11, he says, he will fasten his donkey to a vine, his coat to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. Let me let y'all not ready for this. I'm, 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 I'm going I'm, I'm to do something, something. He said, he will fasten his donkey to a vine his coat to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. First of all, Jacob is foretelling of how fruitful the land is gonna be of Judah. I mean, it's going to be a fruitful land full of milk and wine. And the vines are going to be so common and so strong that even if a donkey is tied to it. Now, first of all, you don't tie a donkey or a coat to a grapevine. Because your donkey is going to eat the grapes. But this verse said that he will fasten his donkey to a vine and his coat to choices branches. Normally now, nobody ties a donkey to a vine. What are you doing tying a donkey to a vine? I got a prophetic word for somebody that is going to catch this today. God says, the blessing that you're about to come into, even if a donkey comes in the atmosphere, you're going to have so much, you're not going to even miss what was ate. Oh, y'all don't want this today. He said, I'm going to get ready to bless you so much. I hope somebody is catching me in the spirit because I feel something about to shift right when I said that I felt a wind come in this place. He said, I'm getting ready to bless you so much that if a donkey is tied to the vine and starts eating, he said, you're going to have so many grapes and wine and milk. You're not going to miss it. Now, Wait, 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 because see this next part, I had to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, should I say that? Because, you know, you get to ask God sometimes, should I say that to the people? Because the NIV, Sister Veronica, calls it a donkey. But the King James calls it an ass. And some of y'all have had some asses that's been tied to your vine. I got a word for you in this place that the ass is about to leave your house. I got a word for you in this place that the asses are getting ready to come out. I got a word for you in this place that I, I, I haven't seen. Look at your neighbor and say, the ass gotta go. Y'all don't want this today, baby. The ass gotta go. Oh, I feel God. It's a new season. It's a new day. You've been dealing with some asses. Some ass-like situations and some ass people that's been eating your blessing, but the devil is a liar. The ass gotta go. Y'all don't want this today. Fat daddy, you heard me, did you? Loud and clear. Look at your neighbor and say it's over. Oh, glory to God. I'm just saying what the Bible calls it. So I'm not cussing. That's what the Bible said it is. So you, before you go out there, Pastor Taylor was cussing. I'm going to say, go to the King James Version and read it. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. So God is into additions 
and not subtractions. He said, the prophecy that Judas wine would be as plentiful as water so that the men of the tribe will be healthy and lively. Give me, uh, get me, uh, carry up and get me some uh, communion cup. Give me a communion cup quickly. Give me, he said, because you're getting ready to have wine and bread that's going to be a healing for your soul. If you're dealing with some type of sickness in your body, lift up your hands for healing is the children's bread. New wine is about to hit your body. New wine is about to hit your atmosphere. I saw this as I was sitting last night. He says, I am the bread. And I am the bread, the water. The water is the blood. He said, if you eat of me, <laughs> the problem is you're not eating you go going to church but you're not eating but when you start eating that word something's going to change and then he says Jamari if you drink of my blood he said from that communion I'm going to enter new wine in your life if you got something going on in your body, I don't know, shut up. Lift up your hands right now and receive your healing. You're not leaving out of here the same. The devil is a liar. New wine is about to hit you. I dare you to say, Lord, heal me. Heal my mind. Heal my spirit. Heal my body. Come on. Healing is the children's prayer. Come on. Healing. 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 Healing of your emotions. Healing of your mind. Healing of your spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh my shit. Something is shifting in here. Something is happening in here. Something is happening now. Now he says that they were gonna even be able to wash their clothes in wine. This wasn't an exaggeration. He said they're gonna have so much wine that if they wanted, they can wash their clothes in the wine. <laughs> he said, you're going to be blessed so much that you can wash your clothes and what I'm about to do for you. Oh, I dare you to give him some praise on that. Bless his tongue to lay is about to hit your life. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, I dare you to give him some praise. He said, you're going to be able clothes because you're gonna be blessed in the city blessed in the field blessed in the storehouse the fruit of your body gonna be blessed now let me add some dessert to that I gotta give you some dessert <laughs> boy I'm telling you hold on hold on hold I gotta get this dessert because Judah means praise. I said, Father, why is this so important? He said, because Judah is from the, ans is the David is in the ancestry of Judah. And Jesus is in the ancestry of David. Revelations 5 starts talking about the one that John is weeping because no one was found worthy to open the books and check out what the angel says that the lion of the tribe of Judah has already satisfied this situation you catching me the lion of the tribe of Judah is the one that is the vine and he said only thing you got to do is hook in because the lion of the tribe of Judah has already given you the victory. The lion of the tribe of Judah has already broken the chain. You are living beneath your privilege because you don't get the revelation. The lion of the tribe of Judah that died over 2,000 years ago has already blessed you. You don't know it and you're living beneath your privilege. But if you get to the vine, 
if you, and start eating at the back. This is what my life looked like. I don't know about your. I've been eating, balling and shot calling, styling and profiling. I got a word for you. You ain't seen nothing yet because I'm gonna keep eating. See, grapes is not for grasshoppers. Grapes is for those that can see themselves clearly. I know who I am. I am a son. I am called. I dare you to get some grapes. If you know who you are, yeah, 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 yeah. Grapes are for those that's ready for the next level. Grapes are for those that's ready to see God move in a special way. It's your season for grapes and wine. It's your season for more than enough. I dare you. I dare you to get it. I didn't tell them to come up here, but they came because they ready to taste grapes. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that put his trust in him for many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all this next season addition this next season multiplication this next season you're going higher this next season more than enough I'm not subtracted out of your life I came to give you victory victory is mine victory is mine victory today is mine I told Satan get behind I got the victory somebody shout it I got the victory. I dare you to praise him on that word. For the lion of the tribe of Judah has broken the chain. The lion of the tribe of Judah has brought healing to your body. Healing to your soul. Healing to your family. Healing from every generational curse. Healing it's the children's prayer. I dare you in this place to worship the Lord for a healing and for new wine, new blessings, new opportunities, new doors. Yeah. Somebody shout yes. See, when you're desperate, you say, excuse me, pastor, but I need some grapes. I done heard what you said, but I got to taste it for myself. That's how you do it. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell Deacon DeVere to come up here. They said enough is enough. And when you get desperate, uh oh, I say when you get desperate, when you are desperate and say I want God to pull back the veil so I can see all that he has for me throw your head up throw your head back and somebody shout more that's what coming into life more i wish above all things that thou will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers prosperity is for kingdom children everybody can't have grapes Everybody can't drink wine. I told you last week that wine is not for children. Wine is for those that have matured taste. Give wine to a child, they'll spit it out and say, oh, that's nasty because their tongue has not matured enough. I ain't talking about baby's kids because baby's kids can have slits and wine and everything else. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I'm talking about those in this place that say, I'm ready for more. There's got 
to be more. God, what else did you have for me? And the lion of the tribe of Judah, that was a prophecy that was spoken eons before Jesus showed up. Eons before Jesus showed up. He says, I'm going to put you in a position. I'm going to put you in a position that you're going to have so much blessing. See, I, I figured since I got to this place, I might as well find out what all God has for me. See, let me tell you something. You deserve to find out why the enemy tried to kill you. I dare you to do the research. Why has the enemy fought me, fought my family? Why, why did this happen? I dare, there has been a war for you. It's been a war. It's been a war for you. And God, in the meantime, while you was crying and upset, has been turning you into a warrior. He's turning you into a warrior. You've come into the place you stand enough is enough. I'm going to decree that word that I am more than a conqueror. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I'm going to decree that word that I am who God says I am and I can do what God says I can do. I am going to decree that word that I am an overcomer. I'm going to decree that word that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastor he leadeth me beside the still water he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake somebody say new wine additions and subtractions so when he gets ready to subtract out of your life more is coming I'm talking to the people that have had some things just this year subtracted out of your life. I got a word for you. More is coming. I want you to get ready. Wasn't those grapes good? This from the stove. Can you imagine God's heavenly grapes? This is symbolic of something that God wants to give you. And you check it out, after all those people came, it's still more left. You won't want for nothing. Get ready for addition. Get ready for, so anytime I see subtraction, I know more is on the way. And so I give him praise for it. Come on, put your hands together.